Is it really? Oh, well, congratulations. That's really cool. Oh, hello. Welcome to story time. Heho, imo takonome. It is good to see you. I was just talking to Tiger here, who says that yesterday was the beginning of the Lunar New Year, and that this year, according to the Chinese Zodiac, is the year of the tiger. <laughs> and Tiger is pretty excited about that. Wow, shechahafetch dafkwal adin dauk. Welcome and thank you for joining me and Tiger today for a special Lunar New Year story time. What is the Lunar New Year? <laughs> oh, well, it's a holiday celebrated in China and around the world. Places like South Korea and Vietnam and Singapore and Malaysia and Indonesia but it is celebrated all over the world and it lasts about 15 days. And people do things like clear out their houses and have big feasts with family and get haircuts and new clothes to start, well, to start the year fresh and new. And there are things like dragon dances and parades and fireworks. And so I am going to tell stories today, not just about those parades and celebrations, but things that touch on some Chinese history and heritage. <laughs> right, yeah, well, I think I should get started. Don't you? Some of these stories are long today, so I'm just going to read three. Well, let's get started. The first story that I am going to read today is called The Chinese Emperor's New Clothes, and it is written by Yin Chang Compostine and illustrated by David Roberts. And this is published by Abrams Books for New Readers. The Chinese Emperor's New Clothes. By now, you have probably heard the old folk tale about the emperor's new clothes, have you? If you haven't, you could look it up. Two sly tailors fool a vain emperor into believing he is wearing magical clothes when in fact he is parading through town buck naked. The truth is that the story took place here in China and without any tricky tailors. Here is the real story. When Ming Da was nine, he became the emperor of China. His ministers thought the boy emperor was too young to rule and took advantage of him. They stole silks to make themselves fine clothes. They stole rice from the emperor's warehouses and sold it to dishonest merchants. And they robbed the royal treasury of gold and precious stones. They left the boy emperor with no cloth to dress the poor, nor no food to feed the hungry, and no money to run his kingdom. Ming Da knew that if he fired the corrupt ministers, they would rebel against him. Day and night, the boy emperor searched for a way to save his kingdom, but he couldn't think of anything until a month before Chinese New Year. Traditionally, People dress in new clothes on New Year's Day, so evil spirits won't recognize them. When Ming Da's loyal tailors came with the design for his new clothes, the boy emperor was gazing out the window at the children begging on the streets. You will look magnificent in the parade, the tailor, old tailor said, holding the cloth higher. 
Ming Da glanced at the dragon stitched above fluffy clouds. He wished he could dress the street children just as finely. Do you like it? asked the young tailor. Very nice, said Ming Da, staring at the crow, monkey, and rat fleeing from the dragon. Suddenly, he had an idea. My ministers are stealing from me. Will you help me outwit them? Of course, said his tailors. So Ming Da told him, told them his plan. The next day, Ming Da summoned his ministers. I want to show you the magical new clothes these fine tailors have made for me, he said. Magical? asked the agriculture minister skeptically. Yes, honest people will see their true splendor, while the dishonest will see only burlap sacks, said the young tailor. Please show us, said the plump war minister. Certainly, Ming Da hopped off his throne and stepped behind a screen. The tailors helped him put on an old rice sack painted with ink and vegetable juices. When Ming Da stepped out, the ministers stared at the boy emperor, mouths agape. Most excellent, don't you think? Ming Da spread his arms wide. Feel the sleeves, he shook his arms. The trade minister broke into a cold sweat. He stroked the rough sack. Um, it's softer than the finest silk. The, 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 the dragon's eyes are so alive, stuttered the war minister. We used the finest black pearls from the South China Sea, said the young tailor. The ministers exclaimed their approval, each louder than the last. Unbelievable, astonishing, magnificent. These tailors are at your service. Who wants magical new clothes? asked the young emperor. The ministers quickly raised their hands. Excellent, tailors get to work, ordered Ming Da. So the tailors set up cutting tables, coffers and trunks behind a large screen. They worked day and night. The news about the magical clothes spread like fire in a dry field. The citizens looked forward to seeing the lavish robes at the New Year's Day parade, except the dishonest merchants. Soon came the fitting for the ministers. Ming Da skipped his daily visit to the orphanage and hid behind a screen to watch. When the trade minister entered, the young tailor held up a rice sack. See how the rubies and pearls in the crow's eyes and beak sparkle in the light? Face pale, the minister glared at the tailor. Why is there only one crow? he demanded. We ran out of jewels, said the young tailor. I will supply all the jewels you need. Just make mine more splendid than the others. He stormed out without trying on his new clothes. When the war minister entered, the young tailor held up a rice sack. Don't you love the extravagant details of the clever monkey? The minister squinted his eyes at the drawing of a sly monkey stealing gold. It is unbelievable. Let me try it on. The tailors helped him into his robe and tightly wrapped straw rope around his chubby waist. How does it fit? asked the young tailor. Can you make it? <clears throat> Can you make it bigger? The minister gasped for air and waved his arms about. Yes, but we ran out of silk, said the young tailor. I will pay with the purest gold. Just make mine more splendid than the others, he ordered. <clears throat> when the agriculture minister entered, the old tailor was busily trimming the bottom of a rice sack with scissors. The minister looked at it from all angles. Beads of sweat ran down his face. 
See how all the rat's shiny eyes look alive? Yes, it's astonishing, the minister stared at the drawing of a long-whiskered rat stealing rice. The tailors helped the minister into his robe. How does it fit? asked the young tailor. The minister looked down at his bare legs. Can you make it longer? He rubbed his knobbly knees. You ran out of silk, said the young tailor. I will pay you with the best rice that you can trade. Just make mine more splendid than the others, he ordered. In the days that followed, the ministers delivered baskets of precious gems, gold, and rice to the tailors. With the jewels and gold, Mingda bought cloth to dress the poor. With the rice, the emperor fed them. Soon came the morning of the New Year's Day parade. When Ming Da entered the hall in his new clothes, the ministers were loudly praising one another. Unbelievable, exclaimed the trade minister. Astonishing, cried the war minister. Magnificent, shouted the agriculture minister. You all look splendid. Let the parade begin, declared the boy emperor. <clears throat> Lion dancers led the way. Firecrackers popped and exploded, martial artists punched and kicked, and acrobats jumped and tumbled. At last, the ministers came marching behind Ming Da, proudly showing off their new robes. The street fell silent, and whispers spread throughout the crowd. Um, spectacular, said one of the dishonest merchants. Beautiful, said another. Lovely design, said a third. <clears throat> oh, look at the dragon puppet. And look at everyone looking at the ministers dressed in rice sacks. That's right. Can you not see they're wearing rice? Sacks, shrieked a boy. The crowd roared with laughter. Mingda smiled as the children sang and pointed. Itchy sacks, itchy sacks. You are wearing rice sacks, exclaimed the war minister to the other two. So are you, cried the trade minister. We have been tricked, shouted the agriculture minister. The ministers fled China. Ming Da replaced them with honest counselors and ruled for many years. His people were happy, well fed, and very well dressed. Now that's the real story. The emperor marched through the town to save his country. I don't know how people ended up with that old folk tale about two sly tailors fooling a vain emperor. And, and if you read this book, well, there's an author's note and also how to make your own Chinese New Year parade robe. The end. So I have a song to go with that. If you have clothes, whether they're made out of rice sacks or real fabric, you might need to close them. You might need to close them up. So I'm going to sing you a song called Buttons, Zipper, Snaps, and Bows. And well, buttons poke through button holes. Can you do that? Poke, you put your button through the hole. Sometimes you need two hands, but I'm going to be playing the ukulele. And zippers, well, they run along a track. They go zip, zip, zip. And then to tie a bow, you make two loops and you tie a bow. And well, those are, those are the actions for the song. So when I say those actions, you could try them out and pretend that you're putting on clothes for a parade, perhaps. Button zipper snaps and bows, snaps and bows, snaps and bows. Button zipper snaps and bows, that's the way we close our clothes. Buttons poke through button holes, through button holes, through button holes. Buttons poke through button holes, and that's the way we close our clothes. Snaps and bows, snaps and bows, buttons, zippers, snaps and bows. 
kittens, zippers, snacks, and bows. And that brings me to the next story of story time today. This story is My Day with Gong Gong, and it is by Senna Yi with pictures by Elaine Chen. One of the things that many people do in the Lunar New Year is hang out with family. And so this is, it's not a Lunar New Year story, but it is about hanging out with family. Here we go. Mom is dropping me off at my Gong Gong's house for the day. I wish you could stay with me, I say. What will Gong Gong and I talk about? I don't know Chinese. It will be okay, May, says Mom. You will still have fun. I don't know about that. Gong Gong is watching hockey on TV. Boring. Gong Gong must think so too because he's asleep. I change the channel to a cartoon. Gong Gong wakes up and smiles. He turns off the TV. Hey, I wanted to keep watching. He gets up and puts on his old cap and his puffy vest. It's time for a walk. Gong Gong's neighbor waves at us. Ni hao, says Gong Gong. His neighbor says something in Chinese. Gong Gong laughs and points at me. Huh? What's so funny? Down the street, vendors sell jewelry and toys, and a man plays Chinese violin. Inside a gift shop, the cashier waves at us. Ni hao, he says. He chats with Gong Gong in Chinese. I look at the glass counter display. Jade earrings, cotton slippers, and small toy animals. The monkey is my favorite because it's my Chinese zodiac sign. Wait, I said at the beginning I was talking to a tiger. That's right, because this is the Chinese zodiac year of the tiger. And the little girl in the story, her zodiac sign, based on the year she was born in, there are 12 of them, is, it's a monkey. My tummy grumbles. I pull on Gong Gong's sleeve. Can we eat, I ask. He pats my head and smiles, but that's not what I asked for. Gong Gong takes us to a dim sum restaurant next. Maybe he understood me after all. Ni hao, says Gong Gong. The cooks nod back as they wrap dumplings with their hands. Carts of food pass by me, yummy pork buns, fried turnip cake, mango pudding. I'm so hungry. Can we eat? I ask Gong Gong again, but he only orders tea. Next is a supermarket. Gong Gong buys groceries, fish, tofu, and vegetables. Mm goy, says Gong Gong when the cashier hands him his bags. I help Gong Gong carry them. They're heavy. I hope we eat soon. Chinatown is always busy. Cars, street cars, and bicycles zoom by. When it's time to cross the street, Gong Gong holds my hand. Everyone is in a rush. I pull on Gong Gong's hand, but he's a pretty slow walker, so I have to slow down too. I wish he'd hurry up. Gong Gong's friends are playing cards and feeding pigeons in the park. I thought we were going home to eat. Gong Gong gives me some cards. His friends look at me and smile. Duck Yi, says one of his friends. They all laugh, but I'm not doing anything funny. <laughs> I can't understand Gong Gong's friends. I don't know how to play this game and we've been sitting here so long. I throw down my cards. Pigeons keep poking at crumbs near my feet. Go away, I yell. I stomp and run through them and they all fly away. Ooh, a pigeon pooped on my coat. 
Aya! Gong Gong and his friends laugh when they see my poopy coat. I cover my face and cry. Gong Gong stops laughing. He walks over and reaches into his pocket. He takes out a tissue and helps me clean off the poop. He reaches into another pocket and gives me two small bags. What could be in the bags? It's a toy monkey from the gift shop. How did Gong Gong know that that's the one I wanted? I opened another small bag. Pork buns from the dim sum restaurant. How did Gong Gong know these are my favorite? Hmm. Thank you. Don't say, I say. Gong Gong smiles. We sit by the water fountain and eat the pork buns. Some pigeons try to eat our crumbs. Gong Gong stands up and waves his arms to scare them away from me. It's getting dark and cold. Gong Gong zips up my coat. Let's go, I say. Gong Gong looks at me. I point to the street. Home, I say. Gong Gong nods. Home. Everyone is still in a rush. I hold Gong Gong's hand. We take our time. Ni hao mei, says the cashier. Hey, that's me. Ni hao, I say. Dote, I say. More buns, yummy. Hey, look, they gave her more buns out the window. <laughs> I make my toy monkey do a funny dance. The cashier makes the other toys in the window dance too. Gong Gong gives me a coin and points. I drop the coin in the man's violin case. Don't say, he says. What do you think that means? I think it means thank you. Thank you. Mom is back to pick me up from Gong Gong's house. Did you have fun? I show her my toy monkey. Aw, so cute, ducky. She laughs and says something to Gong Gong in Chinese. I don't know what she said, but Gong Gong laughs, so I do too. Bye bye, Mei, says Gong Gong. Go oi, Mei. What does that mean, I ask Mom. It means I love you, says Mom. I give Gong Gong a big hug. Bye, Gong Gong, I say. Go oi, Mei. And that is the end. The end, and look, it actually, it has the Cantonese words and what they mean. That ye is cute. And don't say thank you when receiving a gift. And more, if you take this book out, you can learn all those words. The end. So, I have another song. This is and I love you kind of song. This is Little Panda Bear by Kimya Dawson. You are my little panda bear, little panda bear. I love you, yes I do. And all the funny things you do. I love you, yes I do. You are my little panda bear. Panda bears are rare, yes it's true. There's only a few. Today, the last story, we are already at the last story. The last story that I'm going to read is called The Pet Dragon, a story about <coughs> adventure, friendship, and Chinese characters by Christoph Nyman. Christoph Nyman. And let's find out who published this. This is published by Green Willow Books. 
a pet dragon. <clears throat> and by characters, well, I'll tell you something before we begin. Characters are the people or the animals who are in a story, in a book. But characters also means the forms of letters, the writing. So the Chinese characters in this book are the written forms. And see, this form means person. And I'll say these forms as we go through, okay? This is Lin, person. One day, Lin received a very special gift. <gasps> a baby dragon? Small. See? Small. You can see the character and the baby and the body of the dragon, and it means small. Lin and her pet dragon did everything together. They played hide and seek. <gasps> Tree, woods, forest. They made new friends. Cow, sheep, dog, worm. They even made friends with a worm. They perfected their ping pong skills. Middle, this character means middle. <laughs> they told each other exciting stories. Woman warrior or gentleman. It's a puppet show. The dragon loved to play soccer. Uh-oh, cried Lynn. She saw the ball sail toward an old vase. I, this means I, there it is. Crash! The vase burst into a hundred pieces. Ear, Oh, she hears it go crash. Lynn knew that they were in trouble. Big, big trouble. <gasps> father. There's the character for father. He doesn't look happy. From now on, your dragon must stay in a cage, said Lynn's father. <gasps> Prisoner. Dragon's a prisoner now. Lin wasn't very happy about this, and neither was the baby dragon. The next morning, when Lin went to check on her pet, the cage was empty. Oh no, her dragon was gone. Mouth. That's the character for mouth. <gasps> I'm out going. <gasps> Lin couldn't believe it. Where is my baby dragon? Where did my dragon go? Lynn had to find it. Speak words. That's what she was speaking. First, Lynn searched her house. No dragon. Then she searched her entire city. No dragon. Where could her dragon be? She started walking. Work gate. Work gate and walking, and walking. <gasps> mountain, wow, she went up mountain. This is a big search. Lynn came to a huge wall that stretched all the way to the horizon. She looked, and she looked, and she looked. Long, this symbol means long. <gasps> but still, there was no sign of her dragon. Lynn came to a wide river. She saw a curious little lady standing near the edge of the water. My dear girl, the lady said in a crackling voice, I need to get to the other side, but I can't swim. Please help, lift me up. Witch shaman, ooh, this old lady is a witch. And this is the character for river. So Lynn did, and she carried the little lady across the river. Above, below, above, below. The old lady is the character above, and Lynn is below. Lynn set the witch down gently on the other side. 
dear little one, the witch said, a favor deserves a favor. I know where to find what you are looking for. Zap! A jar appeared in the witch's hand. Water and bean. She removed a magic bean from the jar and popped it in her mouth. She chewed it very slowly. She began to shake and rumble. Eat. This is the character for eat. The little witch started to grow and grow and grow. Soon she was as tall as a mountain. Come here, little Lynn, she said, her voice booming. I am going to help you find your friend. Ooh, big. And she lifted Lynn through the clouds. This is the symbol for sky. And Lynn is above it now. Lynn couldn't believe her eyes. There was her dragon all grown up and beautiful. Was this the dragon's true home and the dragon's real family? Friend, she found her friend and that's the character for friend. Whoosh, the dragon flew Lynn all the way back to the city where she lived. The two friends made plans to visit often. Lynn's father was so happy to see his daughter he thanked the dragon for bringing Lynn home and promised the two friends that they could play together wherever they wanted and whenever they wanted. Then they celebrated together. <gasps> How did they celebrate? <gasps> With fireworks. Do you recognize any of these characters from the story? I recognize this one. That was, that was Lynn's mouth when she was amazed. Hmm, do we see any others that we recognize? This is fun, I think that might've been friend. Friends. The end, oh, look, there it is, mouth. I was right, and friends. The end. So, I have some action rhymes to end this story time. First one is called, how do you feed a dragon? How do you feed a dragon who is tall, tall, tall? And make yourself tall, 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 tall. When you're just a kid who is small, small, small. If you could stand on your tiptoes, can you stand on your tiptoes even though you're little? The dragon, who's way up here, could bend down and meet you in the middle. That's how do you feed a dragon. And then swing your dragon tail. Now you get to pretend you're a dragon. You can swing your dragon tail. Turn around once. Ready? Turn around once. And swing your dragon tail. Turn around twice, one, two, and flap your wings like sails. Ready, we're gonna turn around three times, don't get too dizzy. Turn around, one, two, three times, stomp your feet and roar. Let's do that together, stomp, stomp, roar. Jump up high, jump and sit down on the floor. And that is swing your dragon tail. So happy Lunar New Year, everyone. And I will see you in another week for another virtual story time. So long it's been good to see you. So long it's been good to see you. So long it's been good to see you. I'll see you again next week for more stories. Bye!